This is a review of the Extreme X600 electric scooter. I did a preview of this scooter in July, and this is the follow-up to that. I purchased this scooter in June of 2008 um, from BaseStationZero.com, which is a dealer for Extreme scooters. I paid just over $300 and got free shipping. I think the regular price at the time was $350. The reason I got the discount was because it was a scratch and dent. You will find that in this review, I, I am more negative about the scooter. And ultimately, um, at the beginning, I'll just say that I do not recommend the scooter um, for purchase. Um, and I will go into the reasons why as you go on in a review. When I was first looking to buy a scooter, I did it because gas prices were $4.25 a gallon at the time. I wanted to help reduce my dependency on big oil. I wanted to reduce my uh, carbon footprint. Uh, I wanted to go green, but at the same time, I wanted to have fun, I wanted to have fun doing it. And the scooter seemed like an a affordable way to do about it, at least to try it out. And if it didn't work out, it wouldn't be too bad of a hit. So I will say... Right off the top, it is definitely fun to ride around on. The scooter is manufactured in China, and obviously that sets off warning lights in your head. Oh, this thing might fall apart on me. It's probably made out of cheap parts. We've had lots of stories in the past from Chinese goods. Uh, the rear suspension is what I was showing off here. That turned out to be pretty sturdy. Um, the steel frames seem to be good. Uh, Little teeny things tended to be the, the real problematic things. Um, little plastic parts would break easily. Um, small steel parts would bust off that had been welded in. Um, an example would be the latches that, um, when you fold it in half, lock onto. I ended up having to replace them with bolts. They just busted right out one day for no reason. Um, and here I am folding it in half. You know, I'm an adult. I'm treating this with care, and things were busting off of it and I was not impressed with that overall. Um, this Again, the frame seemed to be holding together just fine, but you never knew what was going to happen, what was going to break next. So I give it a yes and no as far as whether it was sturdy. I weigh around 200 pounds, so as far as the handling goes, I tended to have a high center of gravity. I had to allow myself a little more time to make turns, but it was adequate. It wasn't dangerous, and a child might not have to require such large turns because they're lighter than me. Um, if I tried to stand while steering this thing, it was a little scary because it, it tended to want to do some squirrely things. I definitely kept both my hands um, on the handles to keep this thing going right. So I would say it was adequate for handling. The scooter was very easy to operate. You just flip the switch on and then you had an indicator next to your throttle for your batteries to let you know if everything was okay there and then the throttle was just like a moped you just twist it back and you take off uh, the brakes would cut out the engine when they engaged they were easy enough the um, the battery indicator would let you know if the battery is getting too low and then it would flash let you know that you need to turn off your scooter and in order to prevent any type of battery damage. Uh, this, this scooter comes with seal lead acid batteries. They are very unforgiving. Um, if you run them all the way down, you pretty much will cook them and they won't work anymore. And it's pretty expensive. Uh, the batteries, I think, were around $40 each. And there's three of them, so you're $120 right there. I didn't like the fact that I had to charge this up all the time. Even if you used only half of it, a charge, you had to keep that charge up to the top. Otherwise, you reduce the life of your battery. And again, if you ran it all the way down, you ran the risk of destroying your batteries. So I was not very happy with that aspect of it. So it was easy to use, so I give that a yes. Maintenance, I, wasn't, I didn't really care for that. After a month, I decided to upgrade the scooter with a freewheel clutch and a drum brake. I didn't like the disc brake and I wanted to put a freewheel clutch on so that I could coast easier without the engine breaking my, uh, my, my, my coasting speed. So I went to tncscooters.com and they were really helpful and very affordable and I got the upgrade and I installed it and everything seemed to work really good for me. Um, it took a lot of working with to get to work right though. Uh, you can see the freewheel clutch there and then there's a picture of the uh, drum brake. 
it did require um, some time to get to work. So it is upgradable, but it wasn't very easy for me. Now everybody wants to know, what kind of speeds did you get off of this thing? Well, average speed was around 50 miles per hour on a flat surface, unlike most likely asphalt in this case. Um, my top speeds going down a hill before I, my upgrade was 17 miles per hour because the engine would slow it down, and then it, it shot up to 23 miles per hour once I put that freewheel clutch on. I will say that the freewheel clutch did kind of ruin my my torque just a little bit, so when I went up a hill, I had to fight a little bit more, and maybe it slowed me down, but I gained about a mile per hour with that upgrade, so my average speed actually went up to close to 16 miles per hour on a flat grade. Um, as far as the range of the battery, I took I had two major tests that I did. When I first got it, I took it out for around 12 miles, and it still had juice to go. It, it was still running pretty decent, so I might have even gotten 14 miles out of it. I did um, another test at the end here, just like um, not too long ago, about a month ago, and I did easily 10 and a half miles, and everything was fine. Um, after I did those long runs, it took me around seven hours to recharge it, so it's pretty accurate in the uh, in the manual. It says six to eight hours, so that's pretty accurate. So the range was better than what they'd predicted. I think they predicted um, I would get less than 8 miles, and I definitely did better than that. And this was a mixed terrain. Both tests I did on hilly, uh, mixed hilly and flat. And I, I was gunning it the whole time. I wasn't doing half speed. I had that thing cranked the whole time. So um, you could probably even get further if you didn't try to throttle it as much as I did. And, um, of course, who wants to go slower than 50 miles an hour? <laughs> Um, so again, the speeds were fine with me uh, for this little thing. You felt like you were going faster than what it really was. Um, as you can tell in the video, it seems like I'm going lightning speed, but I'm really only doing like 15 miles an hour, which is fine for those little tiny wheels. Uh, performance, I was impressed. Um, it was really fun to ride around on. If you watched the preview I did on the scooter, you would uh, know that I had uh, a bad battery when I initially received it. It ran for like a minute, and then it would just peter out. So I ended up finding out that there was a bad cell. I had to contact Extreme to work out this exchange for a new battery. It was a headache. Um, they required that you had to do everything online uh, through this web interface. There was no number you could call. They wouldn't, they wouldn't deal with you unless you did submitted a ticket online. And this is a picture of the, uh, of the submission ticket. It was a pain. It took sometimes 24 to 48 hours to get a response from a tech. I finally got my battery, so, and they did try to call me about two weeks after the whole thing. But it was just really slow and frustrating. When I first got the scooter, gas was around $4 a gallon. Now gas is around $1.70 a gallon. Uh, winter's coming on here in Michigan, so we'll have snow and ice. So I won't be riding it at all until spring. So that's several months you can't use it. I couldn't ride it in the rain during the summertime, um, so it limited its use. Batteries will eventually wear out, and this that would cost you around $120 to $150 to replace those. Um, maybe they might last a year or two. I don't know. More parts might fail on the scooter. The tires might wear out and whatnot. That's added cost. Um, it really we could get very expensive to own this and it was really frustrating to think about those things so overall is it a good value and practical no not really in conclusion I would like to recommend you consider getting a high quality mountain bike or street bike you can get them for less than three hundred four hundred dollars a good quality one made out of all aluminum frame I purchased my Trek my plain Jane Trek 800 for like $199 back in 1999 and it still runs great. I've put many many miles on that thing and it served me well. I even get exercise on it which I wouldn't get with the scooter. It's a much more valid investment. So I, my final verdict is really consider getting a bike instead. You can get more mileage out of your money that way. I just want to recap on the main points. I'll start with the negative. The box that I received from Extreme with the scooter was a mess. The battery it came with was bad, but I did get that replaced. Framing components are of a mixed quality. Scooter can handle sluggish at times, but I am a heavier person. 
The battery requires constant recharging. Batteries will require plate replacement in the future and that will be expensive. Scooter is very heavy to be carrying around. It's about 75 pounds. Upgrading it can be an adventure. Tech support is slow and frustrating. A bicycle is a better investment in my opinion. And I used to be a child. I remember how I treated things. If you buy this for a child, they will wreck it at some point. Now I'll cover the, the positive aspects. The main components seem to be of a sturdy construction. Uh, it was simple to assemble when I first received it. Uh, the price was cheaper compared to their competitors. It was f It's really fun to ride and it has a very comfortable ride. It had better range than they advertised and it's pretty easy to operate. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have more questions, please check out the forums at v is for voltage.org. Thank you.